So today we have the rear remotes off of a 966 International Tractor. And what we're going to do is take the old style IH factory hydraulic connections and convert them to Pioneer. So these are available through a kit uh, made by Pioneer. And I believe we got these from Bates. So that's where you can get them. And what they do is look in the kit here. You get new barrels, dust caps. They even give you some fittings if you want to convert over hoses. And then all the hardware you need. So we'll pull these out. And then underneath will be the instructions. And also the O-rings you need. So, nice little instruction kit, kind of shows you an overview of what we're going to be doing. So basically, what you need to do is, I've already taken the snap rings off and pulled one barrel out. I left one in there. Um, these barrels just slide in from the, let's see, like that. And then you have the groove on the, the slot on the side that would have been for your handle which you won't have that anymore so there'd just be a push in push out with the new the newer style pioneers so to get these old ones out you're gonna have on the back of the barrels you're gonna have the spacer and then on top of it is going to be a snap ring like that so you can take out that snap ring some snap ring pliers Pull that spacer out. And then on the front, you're going to have a large snap ring like that in there. So, one thing too, before you even take these apart, what I would do is if you get some parts cleaner or brake clean, clean them up the best you can because you don't want to get dust or debris in those. Um, you want them to be pretty clean. So, once you get those snap rings out, basically what you can do is just take a, a dead blow and they should pop right forward. Just like that. And kind of wiggle it. So now you've got some scrap metal. So you can see these were pretty, they were dinged up and they leaked really bad too. So that was kind of the big thing. And if you, if anyone's ever priced out just the rebuild kits for these, for the factory IH ones, you're at a price point. I think, I don't remember what these kits cost, but it's basically the same. And if you're on other, other brands of equipment or newer equipment, um, you know, it gets to be kind of a hassle to have to keep the, uh, adapters around too so that's why we decided to do this they leaked really bad got sick of running adapters and we had the 4020 we had adapters and so it's just kind of nice that um, now with everything um, it's all the same so once you get the barrels out you definitely want to look in there and make sure that you know the, they look everything looks okay um, you know, no issues, nothing like that. Make sure they look pretty clean. This one's got some some debris, so we want to get that cleaned out of there. So we'll get that cleaned up, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, once the barrels are cleaned up, there's O-rings. So there's two sets, and it might be easier to flip it to look at them from the back side. So you got a set of ceiling rings right here and then there's one right down here so use the pick then you can see and i have fingers in the way so right here and then right there and you need to pay attention too because the kit does come with when you open up the kit it's going to come with um square rings or the o-rings and the instructions are going to tell you 
um, depending on if you have the, uh, they call it the plastic slipper seal, and then an O-ring behind it, you use the square rings. If you have just an O-ring, then you use the O-rings. So in this case, I've already done the one set, they're um, slipper rings with um, the O-ring behind it. So get yourself a nice little set of picks, and then you could pull them right out. There's the uh, slipper ring. And then right behind it, is an O-ring. So you got two sets. A slipper ring. O-ring. I'll be throwing them away because it'll get all new. So again, a little bit dust right there. Slipper ring. O ring and then one more set. All right, so there, there's all the old parts. So basically, all you end up using for the original is basically just the, the, the housing, that's it. Uh, everything else is new with the kit. So next up, again, check in there. You wanna make sure everything looks really clean. You know, no debris, paint. Um, you know, paint likes to chip off and get in there. You know, dust, like even I ran these through the parts washer, and honestly, I could have done a lot better job. It's just stuff is never ending on a 50 year old tractor that's just been caked in grime and grease over the years. So, once you get it all that cleaned up, the next step will be to put the O rings in. So, probably the worst part about this job, and it's pretty easy if you got a good set of picks and snap rings, but Besides this, is getting these new rings in the slots. So, what I would do is I got some Super UDT, um, Hytran, and you want to get these nice and lubricated. And then what you're going to do is fit them down in there. And this is probably going to be about possible one-handed. But you want to get them started in the groove. So there we kind of have it started. And then we want to work it around. Might get lucky with this one. Definitely probably two hands. Or even your picks or something, you can kind of you can see it's kind of a, you know, they kind of fold, so you just have to kind of take your time and just kind of get it started and then work it all the way around. And then once it's in, that's what it looks like. So you can see it's Here's the pick though, you can see better. Focus. And it's right there. So the top one's definitely not as hard. It's 
because you don't have to trying to do something halfway down the valve body where you really can't see what you're doing. So again, we'll put that in there. You should really wear gloves if you're handling oil a lot, but fortunately this is uh, takes all my dexterity so almost there one-handed probably couldn't do that again so I'll do the other one and then show you how to install the actual uh, barrels Okay rings are all in now it's time to take our Bodies and we're gonna put them in so What I would do this is why they say to lubricate the rings is Put some oil around those ceiling surfaces where these things kind of have to push through there and then you're just going to push it in the barrel. And what you might have to do is kind of use a dead blow or a mallet and help give it a little persuasion. Very gentle though. But you got to get past those seals. So once you get them past that first seal, which I had to tap these in with a hammer, uh, dead blow, something really gentle, but you gotta get them past those um, first seal rings. So then flip the valve body around, and you can see they're past the first one, but we still gotta get past the second one. So instead of using the snap rings on the back, we have these little covers here. And if you look at them, it does have a, a little bit of a shoulder, so the smaller diameter fits in there. And it fits nicely in the slot. It should, after a little bit more persuasion, it's now sitting in there flat. Might have been a little booger or something on the little lip. So next, you take your 5 16 bolts they give you, put them in there, and what you might have to do, depending on where the, if the bodies went forward, just slide them in. So like this one, it's kind of a pain. You gotta hold it and then start it in there. Okay, same for this one. And then we're gonna tighten those up. And as you tighten them up, tighten it up by hand, you're gonna notice these are both about the same right now. You're gonna notice that this one I had the wrong wrench. It's going to can't get my camera to focus. Well, as you tighten it, it will go in. Okay. Now we watch this. You're going to see it's going to go in, and that's basically you're pulling it past that last seal. And then you want to go until it's snug. And as you can see, there's definitely a difference there. So we'll tighten up the other one. And then when you're done with that, 
you want to torque to 18 to 20 foot pounds. So at this point, once you're all torqued up, should look like that. See the dust and dirt is a never ending battle. That last little piece cleaned out of there. There we go. So, what you gotta do with the next step is these dust caps. So, they're pre slit uh, in the middle for your coupling to go through. And you can see they fit in the slot of the old handle for the original valve. And if you look at them, they have these little triangles on them on the top or bottom. And that's because it depends on these kits work for either side, you know, left hand side, right hand side of the tractor. So um, this remote is the left remote. So that's how it's going to go. If it was the right remote, it would be mirrored. Go the other side, basically like this one right here. So here's the right remote. So you can see they're just mirrored. So what you got to do as they put these drain holes in, depending on which side is up, which side's down. So in this case, this, this side is down. So what you have to do is you gotta take a knife or a, what I found that works pretty easy because this rubber is pretty soft, it's kind of tough to cut. It's just take some uh, wire cutters, some diagonal cutters. And what you wanna do is take, follow that V and cut a V slot all the way back to this drain hole. And what that does is when you're coupling or uncoupling, you're always gonna have a little bit of fluid that's gonna leak out. That's just the nature of these things. Um, that gives that fluid a place to drain out so it doesn't stick, stay in here and then you end up kind of hydro locking this and it's gonna make uncoupling and coupling a pain in the butt. So you have to cut that on both of them on the bottom side and use that little, that little upside down V as a template. So the way I do that is I take some diagonal cutters and then just cut from there and then cut from there all the way down to the hole. So I've got them cut. Doesn't have to be very big, just enough that any little bit of oil will drain out of there. So next step is take some oil and three these guys up. And then hopefully you find out you cut your slot on the right side. And then you kind of just push these things in. Like so. What you might have to do is just kind of take a screwdriver and just kind of guide it in because it's got to fit around that outside and it's got to fit all the way down to the shoulder because uh, you'll see in the next step what you got to do why that's got to be all the way down. So I'm going to do the other one and then we'll move on to getting the uh, retainer snap rings in there. Once these are in, now you want to take the snap rings they gave you, put them out like so, and then what you're going to do is take a screwdriver and push this in so it fits in the, there's a slot in here, plus kind of the slot and the initial, the, uh, the housing where the old snap ring fit in. And what that does is that'll hold in the, uh, the rubber boot. So I'll probably need two hands for that. So I'll get them in and show you the, what it looks like when it's all done. And there we go. So kind of a pain to get that snap ring in, but you can see, you look around there, snap ring goes around and it catches, there's a little bit of a lip between the rubber cover 
and then the groove in the actual housing. So that's it. Hopefully no more leaks and no more adapters.